Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll take a look at microservice communications. Having a microservice architecture system is very common nowadays. In this architecture, your microservices need to talk to each other very regularly. That's what we will focus on today. At first, we'll take a look at the two different types of communication, HTTP-based and message-based. We'll go through the differences between the two. We'll also take a look at a couple of use cases for both the types. The first type of communication is HTTP-based. The second type of communication is message-based. Let's look into the details of both, starting with the HTTP communication. Let's say you have two microservices. One service can render a catalog of all products for a given user. The other service has details about individual products. To render this catalog, the catalog service need information about each of the product. This information resides in the product service. So how does the catalog service get this data from the product service? If using HTTP communication, the catalog service will send a HTTP GET request to the product service. In response, the product service will respond with a JSON block containing details of all the products. This HTTP request is similar to any generic HTTP request used in web application. The endpoint that the catalog service is calling is predetermined by the API contract between the two services. So HTTP communication is pretty simple. Whenever one service wants to talk to another service, it just sends an HTTP request according to one of the API endpoints. The request can be get, post, or put. Now let's take a look at some of the defining features of this kind of communication. HTTP requests are synchronous and blocking by nature. Once the service sends the HTTP request, it has to wait for the other service to give a response before it can do other things. So the service has to essentially wait for the response before it can process other things. Typically, the services use REST endpoints to communicate. HTTP communication can run into timeout issues. What does that mean? Let's say service A asks service B for some data. However, service B is down for some reason. Because HTTP requests are blocking, service A will keep on waiting for a very long time, expecting a response, even though service B is down. You can set a predefined timeout to avoid this. Let's say you specify a timeout of 5 seconds. That means service A will wait up to 5 seconds before deciding to close the connection. So we need to design the endpoints in such a way that data can be retrieved or stored very quickly. Otherwise, you run into timeout issues which can snowball very quickly in an architecture where you have multiple microservices. Now, let's look at how many connections we need if we are using HTTP communication to talk to other services. For every pair of services that want to talk, we need one connection between the two. So in a system where you have a bunch of microservices, you'll end up with a ton of connections. Every service needs to be connected to every other service that it wants to talk to. So what are some good and bad use cases of HTTP communications? The green ones are good use cases and the red ones are bad use cases. The most common use of this kind of communication is if you need live data. For instance, let's say your front-end service needs to talk to your back-end service to display some data to the client. This has to be done through a HTTP request. Any other tasks that can be done super quickly, HTTP communication is a good use case. You won't need a long timeout for these. Now let's look at some use cases that might suffer from HTTP communication. You don't want to use HTTP communication for background tasks. Background tasks, by definition, means that your caller service do not care about the response right now. So there is no need to have such a blocking call. The other bad use case is more tricky. Let's say service A needs to call service B, and B needs to call service C. Service A changes some data in service B, and service B changes more data in service C. 
Now, all these changes need to happen in this particular chain of HTTP calls. If one of the calls fail or run into a timeout issue, we might leave our data in the wrong state. We can have fancy rollback logic to handle these, but usually these can get complex very quickly. So for transaction operations that might need rollbacks, HTTP communication might not be the best idea. Now let's look at the other communication type, that's the message communication. The idea is pretty simple. You have a message bus which contains all your messages. Microservices can write messages to this bus whenever they feel something might need to be communicated to other services. Other microservices can listen to this bus for messages that they are interested in. Let's say service A wrote a few messages to the message bus. Now service D knows that it has to do something whenever something happens in service A. Service D can subscribe to messages from service A so that it gets notified by the message bus every time service A writes something to the bus. This way, an asynchronous communication is built among all microservices. Let's look at some of the features of this message-based communication. The message bus that you saw in the previous slide, that's called the message broker. It stores all messages being sent from all microservices. For every message, there is associated metadata that tell the broker who wrote it. There are multiple message brokers out there like Kafka and RabbitMQ. Microservices can publish messages to this broker and microservices can listen to this message bus for particular messages that they care about. So you can see the relationship between the microservices is asynchronous. If one service wants to talk to another service, it does not wait for it to respond. Instead, it just writes the message to the message bus and moves on. This asynchronous nature makes this whole system non-blocking. The whole system is built on a PubSub architecture. Microservices publish messages to the bus. Other microservices subscribe to the message bus for particular messages so that they can get notified whenever there is a message that they care about. Based on that message, they can carry out whatever logic that they have. How many connections do we need in this architecture? If we have n services, we need n connections. Every service just needs to be connected to the message bus. They don't need to be connected to each other. So the number of connections does not grow exponentially with, num with the number of services in the system. It might look like you're getting lots of benefits in the system, without any disadvantage. However, that's not true. Message-based communication does not work for live data. Let's say service A needs some data right now, or service A wants to write some data right now and do something once the data is written. You can't use message-based communication for that. You need HTTP connection. Where message-based communication shines is for background tasks. Let's say whenever a user signs up, you need to send a welcome email. When the user hits the sign up button, we don't need to block the user request till the welcome email is sent. Instead, the front end service can just write a message into the message bus for the email to be sent and then respond to the user that they have successfully signed up. In the background, your email service can pick up this message and send the email to the user in the background. These kind of background tasks are awesome use cases for message-based communication. Another use case is for transactions needing rollbacks. Let's say a user purchases a product. You might have multiple services in your system, one dealing with shopping cart, one dealing with product inventory, and one dealing with the transaction itself, and another one dealing with sending the confirmation email. If you communicate it with HTTP, the whole thing has to be blocking, so the user has to wait till the whole process is done. Also, if one part of the purchase fails, it might be difficult to roll back other parts. So instead of that, your first service can just send a message to the message bus and kick off the purchase process asynchronously. All subsequent services can communicate with each other through messages up till the confirmation email. Finally, your email service can send the confirmation email to the user telling them whether the purchase was successful or not.
This way, your services don't need to be bound by HTTP connections and strict timeouts. They can gradually finish the whole process and even retry operations that fail without worrying about needing to roll back. Using messages make the whole system more flexible and robust. As you can see, there is no one magic microservice communication protocol. Both HTTP and message-based communications can be beneficial. It totally depends on your product. That's all from me today. If you like the content, please leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.